Hey guys, before we get this video started, at the time of recording, we are at 26,000 subscribers, which is just absolutely insane. I just wanted to say that I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and if you haven't subscribed just yet, please smash that subscribe button as it helps me out a ton. Now, as many of you know, I have been dragging out an announcement for almost a month now, and I think it's time to tell you guys what's going on. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. So as you can see, I've decided to make a new server network called Snow Lodge Rust. And our first server, Snow Lodge 3X, will be dropping on January 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to get in on the action, go on over to discord.gg slash snow lodge rust and verify to see all the channels. I will see y'all in there. Let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, guys, today I am bringing you the Igloo. As many of you know, I am a clan builder, having built some of the most massive YouTube bases in the game. However, I have received one too many comments asking to bring you guys a trio base with my own twist. So here it is. After a long day of beating down clans at launch site, stealing their Bradley and all of their kits, you're going to need a place to securely store all that loot. And this base is built to do exactly that offering a massive open core with great turret angles, wide gap bunkers for your most valuable items, a metagame shooting floor with roof peaks, towers with bed respawns in each, an overpowered mini china wall with an additional three bedroom spawns per person, and a turret guarded compound. This base has everything you could possibly need for a solid trio wipe. And when those clans do eventually try to take their loot back, you can rest knowing that this is the best trio base in Rust right now for online raid defenses. I know I have talked this base up enough, so let's go ahead and take a tour so you can see what's going on. Alright, so here we are outside of the igloo. As you can see, we are using ramp disconnectables for the very outside of the base, and this is on purpose. There is a high probability the face punch will be patching Satori disconnectables, so for this space, we have opted to go with ramp disconnectables. Here is the TC upkeep here, and this is just about the same for all six externals. Um, on the other three, though, it is about half as much metal and stone, so nothing too crazy. Coming inside of our gatehouse here, we have some peaks outside of our compound and of course into our compound. And don't worry about these peaks. Face punch has fixed them. You no longer get projectile invalids when your head is clipping into the ceiling here. So you are all good to go. Coming into compound here, we have our mini china wall that we're looking directly at. And of course, tons of turrets. So the best part about this space is the turret coverage that you can get. And it's honestly kind of insane. There's turrets everywhere. And uh, ideally, we keep our furnaces super high. That makes it a lot harder for people to use these to jump into your funnel wall here. As you can see here, this is our jump up to get into base. And you might be wondering why it's twig. And that's because this is what is called a seawall. So once I jump up, I will shoot this out. And... For anybody now trying to come in, whether it be someone trying to go deep or people raiding your base, they can no longer just jump over the seawall here. Okay, so going back over the seawall here, um, we have some turrets here. We back them up a little bit just so there's more turret coverage for people trying to ladder up your base during a raid, which is super nice. 
Coming into the mini channel wall here, we have some awesome peaks outside through the uh, walls here. Whenever they get blown open, these are awesome peaks. This floor here does a great job of protecting your head. Back here, we have some uh, stash loot, drop loot, whatever you want to call it. You could take the ore that you farm, drop it in here, and then put it straight into your furnaces. And here we have some mixing tables, but you can also put a bedroom. Really doesn't matter. It's up to you. And the best part here is that you can put furnaces in these slots and they don't block mobility. I'll show you how to do that in the video, but just for the sake of this, I wanted to be able to demonstrate how the turrets fit. Um, okay, so show you how this works here. As you can see, there's a shotgun trap under that and the store stops me from running this way. This is where the entrance to our base is, and these shotgun traps essentially form a funnel wall, so anybody trying to get through here will die to those shotgun traps, and I think that's just a pretty cool feature to have on such a small base. So here we have two bedrooms, and uh, these bedrooms also offer peaks that can be accessed just by pulling out a hammer and removing the window. And up here, again, we have more Patrico peaks looking out towards the walls. Super awesome angles, great head coverage so you're not getting tripled. And probably the best part is you have a peak that looks directly into your airlock, which is super great if someone's trying to door raid you. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the starter here. So as you can see, this is a pretty standard egg starter. We have tons of furnace spots. We can fit literally a million bags. Bags are not a problem. There's 12 boxes of loot storage. It's just basically everything you could ever need. And of course, we have about 10K middle upkeep on main TC, which is not very expensive at all. Coming back outside here, we're gonna go ahead and go up to our second floor. So this looks kind of confusing. I know this is just how the bunker here is set up, but we're gonna come up here and this is your open core. So literally a clan style open core, which is really cool in a base this small. You've got three turrets here. These turrets also look directly into your shooting floor, which is super nice. And these turrets cover the drop down from your roof, which is really cool. Very uh, multifunctional turrets here. You get eight boxes, well, technically 10 boxes of loot on each side. So there are 30 boxes of storage inside this open core which is just insane. So basically all you could ever need for a trio wipe. Now coming back here, you can see we have our wide gapped bunkers. These are super nice for storing your secure loot. And you could also make this a door where you could put a vending machine to put a shop in. Also, no problem there. So we keep a flame trap here. So if people are trying to raid your base, the flame trap will light this on fire and close your wide gap bunker super nice okay coming up a level here we have our shooting floor so this is the first stage of it as you can see we have some peaks in the compound here and we have some long range peaks here which are very nice for looking into raid bases or shooting respawns as they run back coming out here more peaks along these here and we have a chute here that goes down that's where the uh, drop box loot is Okay, coming up here, this single door is our way to the roof. You can see we have a peak on each side where you can look into your roof, which is just super nice. And I forgot to mention that you can also use this here to look back at your roof. This excellent roof coverage all the way around. Now here you can have a bedroom floor. Traditionally, I will use this to pull a mini inside here and use this as a mini garage as well. Plenty of options. Here are some extra awesome peaks down into your close compound. I like to use the shooting floor for far away shots and this one will cover directly down into your compound. Coming up here, you have the tower bedroom and I'll always keep hammers in these and only pull off the windows that are applicable. So if they're raiding from this side, I will only pull off this window. And probably the coolest spot on this entire base to shoot from is these peaks here. If you have a suppressed AK or an M2, something like that, and you're up in one of these towers while they're raiding far away on one of these sides, no one's going to be looking up here. So I think that's a really cool feature to add to the base. And that is basically the igloo. So let's go ahead and learn how to build it.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get going with the starter. So what we're gonna do is place a square down. You want it to be just about this high off the ground. This way, when you put your funnel wall up, it's a lot harder to jump over it. Next, we're gonna do a triangle in the middle, a square off of each side, and then fill this in with triangles here to make an egg. Now, off of each triangle, you're gonna put a square, and off of each square, you're gonna put a triangle. Super easy. Okay, now we're gonna pick two squares here. So we're gonna do these two squares and we're gonna add a single door on the left, single door here, window on the right, and a roof on top. Make sure that the door is on the left and the window is on the right. Now we're gonna do this on the same over here, door on the left, window on the right, roof on top. And now we're gonna go ahead and seal this in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add our doors in. Again, we're creating an airlock so the front door faces in, the next door faces out. And we can put our window or bars in there. And same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna split the loot up here. So we're gonna do one wall here, and this will be a loot room. Put that in. Let's go ahead and prioritize the roof just so no one jumps straight in on your base. Okay, now over here, this will be our little furnace pod. So you can grab your furnaces here and just stack them just like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and place our TC now. So we're gonna place it as close to the front as we can. Right about here, we still have to put a door down. So just remember that out there is perfect. And now what we're gonna do, it's gonna be a little weird, but we're gonna place our tier two right in front of this. And for now, you can just open the door on the tier two. You can get it, but it is super nice for the tier three if you upgrade to that in time. I just like doing this just to save some space, so nothing too crazy. Okay, so wall here. This is also a loot room. We'll do frames here and here, and go ahead and add a floor frame there through the wall. Now you can go ahead and place your boxes in. For this one, you will set your boxes up just like this. And remember, before you place the front boxes, go ahead and set up your garage doors. Okay, here, we're gonna place this all the way in the back. And then one more box going right there. Okay, other boxes will go here. You will put your bags on the floor here. And at the end of this process, your base should look a little something like this. And once your base is like this, you are ready to move on to stage two, which is setting up your compound. So let's go ahead and move on to the next stage. All right, so now that we have our starter down, we're gonna go ahead and start on the externals. For this, you're gonna wanna go into your menu and sanctuary and make sure that symmetry is set to three-sided. Find the piece with the missing triangle here and we're gonna get started. Place a triangle and go out three squares, the triangle on the end and delete. Not all that. Now get rid of these remaining triangles. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out four squares. And on this last square here, it's gonna be raised. You can see here, one, two, three, four, raised. This one will be lowered, another lowered, and at the end, we will have a triangle. This is where your TC is gonna go. We can go ahead and just stone this up for now. Place your TC in the middle there, and get a door on it. Now you have three TCs to secure your base. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the next part. Here at the two triangle portion, again with three-sided symmetry, we're gonna place a triangle. Then we're gonna go out two squares, place a triangle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back with triangles until you have something that looks like this. Perfect. Okay, here we're gonna go out two squares. And this is the start of your mini china wall here. So from there, you're gonna go out another two squares a raised foundation, and then a, another two lowered foundations of the triangle at the end. If you paid close attention, you would realize that the square setups are exactly the same on all six sides, except for these three triangles. 
So this is really hard to mess up. Okay, we're good. Stun out this TC. And place our TC there. Door on it so we're secure. Okay, now we can kind of get creative with things. As we have it, your base won't start decaying just yet. But once we start breaking twig, things will start decaying, so you have to be quick with it. We'll go ahead and start on these sides here. All right, so on this foundation here, we're gonna go ahead and stone this. We're gonna stone this one as well. Two triangles off to each side. And we're gonna place walls just like this with an airlock at the front and ceilings. And I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade. In the airlock here we're gonna place our airlock door and here we're gonna place a ramp facing this front wall remember your tc's in here so the ramp will face opposite the tc okay coming outside here we're going to add another ramp and it is going to face this high foundation you can turn this ramp stone and then break the foundation under it this is a disconnectable so you come inside here, it is connected to this ramp. And this jump through can be a little annoying sometimes. You can use a double door there if you'd like. But if we look at TC right now, this is my upkeep. But if I break TC, this is my upkeep. We lost the wood and some of the stone. So that's just how this works. All right, make sure that you don't upgrade these. Do not do that. Now the best part about this is that it is the same on the other three sides. So I'm going to go ahead and go through these really quick. All right, we've gone ahead and finished all of our six externals at this point we are highly highly unlikely going to get raided out of our position but we don't know that for sure yet so we got to confirm all right so find the tcs that come back to this triangle point here do not do this off of these it will create a massive headache for you okay so off of this we're gonna go back to our raised foundation and we will add half holes here and on top we will add a floor this will eventually become a turret pod these two foundations here can get upgraded to stone, and this one will get a window just like that. Here, we're gonna go ahead and add two frames just like that, and we'll remove these foundations just so you have a little more room to run around your compound. Okay, so that's much more progress, but we're not done just yet. Now we need to get this part done. This is a little trickier than the one I just showed you, but it still isn't too bad. So here on the second square, we're gonna upgrade this and we're gonna add two foundations off of each side and upgrade those. On these two pieces here, we're adding half walls and windows. And up top, we are gonna add a floor. Okay, now here, this will be our airlock. So we're gonna add two foundations on each side. And here we're gonna add windows, double door frame up front and double door frame in the back. Now we will be adding our roof pieces here. This is super simple. Just grab your roof triangle and place it just like that. And same thing on the other side. Okay, we have our airlock set up. We are now protected from the outside, even though our compound's still wide open. It's fine though. Um, we can go ahead and break these foundations. We don't need them. And now what we're gonna do is tie in our airlock to this portion of the China wall here. So we'll get some jumps to get those sealed up. And what we're gonna do now is just remove these foundations. And you can place a lowered foundation here and stone that. That'll help you make jump ups into your airlocks. You can place another door here if you'd like. With that said, we will need to connect this here. Um, we can leave this for now, but instead we're gonna go ahead and go all the way. What we're gonna do is place a frame here and then a regular wall. And what we're gonna do is add one more frame just like that. And we will upgrade this to stone. With all of this said and done, everything is now tied together. So we are ready to begin working on our mini China wall. Let's go ahead and get started with that.
All right, so before we start our mini China wall, what we're gonna do is find the one triangle on the starter that doesn't have an airlock on it. And we're just gonna add some honeycomb to that as your TC sits behind it. With that done, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade everything on the starter to metal, or you can hold off on this step for now, but I like to ensure that it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. All right, now everything that I'm able to touch has been turned to metal, except for these two, of course. And now we can start building our china wall. So we're gonna go ahead and start on these two pieces, or on this piece right here, with the turret pod on the front. I'm gonna add windows on the side and a roof on top. Add a frame here and two frames on each side. Now you can add a roof here, you can add a grate. Personally, I add a frame here so I can later on toss a floor grate in there. Just helps with visibility into the compound and late game stages. Okay, now as we begin setting up our mini china wall, the horizontal embrasure will become your best friend so all right in this room we're going to add our ramp and off of each side we're going to add triangles just like this and we will remove them on the way back now we're going to add our walls our half walls here this creates our turret pod with a floor on top super easy now the most important part to remember is to place a floor right here this gives you your amazing patrico peaks here which are just amazing for defense now i'm going to do the same thing on the other side really fast All right, now we're gonna go ahead and place barricades on these. Now, first and most importantly, you wanna barricade here. Someone could jump across from this TC. Now back here, we'll place floors just like this and the barricade will be placed just like that. Okay, same thing on each side. Now, you might notice that you can't jump over this and that is problematic for once the build kind of gets going. So make sure that you use twig jump ups here. And if you ever start getting raided, just only have one and shoot it right as the raid begins and they won't be able to jump into your mini china wall. It's super effective. All right, coming over to the next piece of your mini china wall here. What we're gonna do is add squares here and here. And now we gotta set up this weird portion of it. So we're gonna go ahead and add windows here and then triangles here. So these triangles can hold lockers, they can hold batteries. Personally, I like to have them hold my batteries. So we'll add a door just like that and we'll come back and place batteries in these later. Same thing on each side. Okay, don't forget your horizontal embrasures. I'm gonna come out front and go ahead and get embrasures on these. And now what we're gonna do is add a floor there, half wall here, and then floor there. This gives you two layers of Patrico Peaks, which is super nice. Same thing here. Okay, now here at the front, this is a little more complicated. What we're gonna do is add a regular roof, just like that, a half wall here, and then a full window there. And that is really all there is to making your mini china wall. Now, if you wanna go ahead and finish it, you can add some barricades here. And just to kind of show you all how this works, we will go ahead and finish up the airlock up front. We're gonna add our two walls here, and this will be locked in. We will place two frames, one here and one here. Do not place a frame there. Don't do that. That will ruin your bunker. You do not want that. Now, since we're still in three-sided here, what you will need to do is get your loot rooms done really quick. These are your depot storage. So we're gonna add walls here, half wall there. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna place ramps just like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and place our boxes. Now this is a slight thing to remember. You might as well just delete those top boxes for now as they will impede the open core above you. So just go ahead and leave it like this for now with the bottom two boxes there. Okay, window here, floor here, and then just like this. Now things are starting to get working. You can kind of see the base building itself around you. We're gonna add a double door in this frame here, just to kind of seal things up. 
And now to show you how this works. So these are bedrooms and we'll get to that in a little bit, but to make this funnel work here, you're going to take your double door and face it out. That way people cannot run through it and they cannot run through this gap either. So it essentially keeps them from going deep on your base just by force. Now, if you want to be really mean about it, you take shotgun traps and you rotate them and you place them just like this. That way, when they try and push deep inside your base, they die to the shotgun traps and there's really not much they can do about it. Okay, so in here, we're in our bedrooms. Go ahead and open this. We're gonna place our battery in here. And now we have a decision to make. We can hook up our battery and then place our locker in front of it just like this. So you could still kind of get to your battery as needed, but then you run the problem of having the door shut. So I, I don't normally do that. I will most times face my locker in this direction and then only use this peak for this side. I like to have this compound peak open 100% of the time as when your bed is up, all I have to do is crouch on my bed and it forms a Patrico peak, which is just super nice. So that's how I use the bedrooms here and you can go ahead and copy on all sides. Okay, now we are almost done. Coming up onto the roof here, we're going to go ahead and add roof triangles here and a regular floor frame just like this. That way you can jump up onto your roof. Okay, here we're gonna place a roof triangle there. And now we're gonna go ahead and finish up and get our bunkers set up. So this is the fun part, if you will. I'm gonna go ahead and add a floor or a regular door here. And this is just a reminder, you can use this to operate a shop, which is super nice. So I'm gonna place a vending machine there. It's the same on all sides. And here we're gonna create a loot room. And we'll go ahead and get our boxes in here. And with our boxes placed, we'll go ahead and put a garage door there. Now just to show you how this works, your wall will go here. I'd recommend immediately making this wall metal as with this floor. And another note, they can pick into these. I'd recommend that these are high qual just so it takes them drastically longer if they do decide to try and do that. Now to open your bunker here, all you have to do is go under it from this angle and place a roof triangle. Make sure that that isn't stone, you want it to be twig. And then you can get into your bunker and the best part about it being wide gapped is it's super easy to jump back out. Now, one last thing I would recommend doing is taking a flame turret and placing it far in the back here. Now, this is so if someone does get into your base, then the flame turret will cut on and it will break this twig here, which will cause them to not be able to get into the bunker or get stuck inside the bunker with the flame turret. Either option's not very good. All right, that is it for the mini China wall and bunker setup. So let's go ahead and move on to getting our turbines and turrets set up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our turbines up and I'm also gonna get some early game turrets set up as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up three regular double door frames off of this socket right here, one, two, three. And we'll go ahead and place a fourth. I'll show you what it's for in a second. And on the front of this now, we're gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, but on the fourth, we're placing a window. It should look just like that. Okay, on the top of this, we're gonna place a floor and then we're gonna place half walls just like this and a roof there. Now this should be aggressively obvious what these are for. It'll be turret pods eventually, but for now, we're gonna put our turbine up here. And now you do have a good bit of runway to get all the way to this battery here. I'd recommend going off the left hand side there, but in the event that you feel that you need more space, a good place to hide a combiner is right up here in this corner. It's not an easy place to see for people out in compound. So from here, we'll plug the power out and you're going to run it down to the ground here. Try and keep the wire as hidden as possible. And then we will attach it to your food combiner here. Now I'm going to tie this down into the ground. And I'm going to attempt to get this as close to these foundations as possible. And I will run it into here. 
into my battery. Now, this gives you three batteries that are now fully charged. Each battery can technically do nine turrets, but for now, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you the mandatory ones that you absolutely need early game. So first and foremost, you're gonna need these turrets up and running. These are the most annoying ones to set up, but you really do need to. This way, when you're building your base up, you're not gonna get top down. There won't be any weird heli landings on top of your base. You're just gonna be relaxing. Next most important are these turrets. These two, once those are wired and ready to go, they will essentially defend your entire base. This turret sees all the way down into your funnel wall over there and likewise right here. Those turrets are super, super broken. And that's really all you need for right now. If you do want to go the extra mile, toss a turret right here, just so that's a little harder for people to hide. As you can see, when I'm at this entrance here, I can see both turrets, which means both turrets are watching me. So if you put bolties in those, that's a pretty easy way to go about it. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and get our compounded barricades down. And you guys are truly going to appreciate just how easy this compound is. All you need is 18 compound walls, which is essentially no wood. That takes me no time with a chainsaw. So find your first external, and this doesn't even have to be super precise, but take your wall and try and aim the end of it at the turret box over there doesn't have to be precise at all. Now off the turret box here, put it right about in the middle of the wall. And right here, you just connect the two, literally the easiest compound out there. And we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. All right, so for your furnaces, I wanna place them so that nobody can jump into my funnel wall here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find about the midpoint of these walls here. I'm gonna take the furnace and try and line it up right with the midpoint of the wall. I'm gonna push it as far up into the sky as I can. This looks ridiculous, I know, but all I have to do to get into it is just jump and I can still access it. This way, no one can jump up in there and then jump over your wall. No one can use this for any sneaky stuff. It's just super nice to have it that way. And I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. Super, super simple. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and finish up our barricades here. We have the barricade on the turret box over there, but I wanna go ahead and get this one done. So we'll use twig here just to be sure that you know what's going on. Place twig just like this, and we're gonna grab our barricade. And this one should be right about in the middle of this square tile here. And we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. That's it. Delete that. And you are good to go. Now, as you could tell, this can technically be laddered in. So if you're a stickler for this, I'll show you a much more secure way right now that's a lot harder to jump in. Place the same triangles and take this barricade and press it against the back of that. Do the same thing on each side and then rotate this one forward. You can now get rid of these. And this is now much harder to jump into, but it also costs an additional three more barricades. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding how you wanna set up barricades. And now let's go ahead and move on to the fun part, the open core. All right, here we are on the top of the base. So now we're gonna go ahead and build our open core. I just wanna make a quick note that everything else I do in this video will be done in metal, is that will be the grade that I wanna finish the base in. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around real fast and upgrade everything on the main base, including the bunkers to metal. Okay, now with everything upgraded, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these roofs as it makes this kind of difficult. Now, this is the same on all three sides. So it is again, super easy. Go ahead and make two square compartments just like this. Now this part kind of sucks, but you're gonna do two half walls and two squares. You're gonna place your triangle through the wall. If you just look at the end of the square piece here, you can place it Then you're gonna build your triangles back. Make sure that you go outside and delete those triangles. You don't want people knowing where your open core is. Okay, here we're gonna take ramps and we're gonna place them just like this. And then we're gonna place frames there and roofs on top. And go ahead and toss garage doors on here. I tend to face these in just for ease of use. Now we're gonna go ahead and place our boxes. And just a reminder, we left the top boxes out here off because it would impede the 
open core up there so we can go ahead and place these now so you have your extra depot boxes okay so i'm gonna place a wall frame here don't do anything in here we're not going to touch this just yet it uh, gets a little confusing so i'm um, coming back in here we're going to place half walls just like this and floors just like this now the tricky part here is to get your 10 boxes you have to place two boxes in these corners here and it can take a little little time to get these right so just you have to mess around with them eventually they will work you're just trying to push them in that far back left corner all right super easy now we're going to go two frames up here in the middle with a triangle in the center and we'll go ahead and do a triangle on top of that as well we're going to go ahead and get our turret pods built so we're going to do a triangle here and then two half walls just like that and a floor on top and i'm going to say that you should literally stop your build and get these turrets plugged in these turrets are so important they basically guard the entire base so i would i would get these turrets up immediately okay disclaimer out of the way we're gonna go ahead and finish up the open core here now so right here we're gonna add a regular triangle floor and we're gonna go ahead and get this piece done here so we can have this accessible again with twig we're gonna place the roof triangle back this opens our bunker but it also allows us to place a floor frame off the side there and we can now use this to go up which is super nice coming back over here we're gonna go back to metal this is a door frame this is a regular window and now we got to build our shooting floors so that gets kind of complicated looking down here what we're going to do is build a half wall there and a window here and now what you can do to strengthen this window early is place a floor frame across just like that okay and on top of this we're just gonna place a low wall okay right here we're gonna do a half wall with a window on top and if you have it go ahead and place the embrasure in in the correct direction and if you do have it available go ahead and plug these chutes with your triangle ladder hatches these are your quick access down to the compound but i mean we're looking at it simply these are also super quick so you have six super fast methods to get down to your compound now these doors i would recommend either garage dooring or having them be reinforced and then here i would probably add a regular vertical embrasure and we could face these in super super simple all right now what we're gonna do is get our shooting floor up so we're almost there we just have to finish the outer parts here so all half walls here we're gonna add a floor piece in the middle here and what we're gonna do now is place windows just like that and i close this in with roofs now all we're gonna do here is just add two horizontal embrasures just like this we're gonna leave this empty now we're gonna take our roof triangles and we're gonna place these we can get them to place if you cannot get them to place don't worry too much there's a little bit of finagling you can do with it as per usual but the easiest way to do it is to go up under it and there we go okay so i'm gonna leave this up to you some people like having turrets in their shooting floor i know that i do so you can place a turret off of this and it is a super effective way of having your turret or your shooting floor covered for you so just an option if you want to put a turret there you can it does impede mobility a bit because this is how you run around through your shooting floor but in my opinion it's worth it so i'm going to leave it in there okay same thing here half wall window and of course horizontal embrasure on top here we're going to do two regular double door frames we will garage door these same thing here and same thing here I know these are a lot of garage doors just for the shooting floor, but as you can see, the shooting floor almost goes directly into your core. With only six turrets of coverage, you know that it's kind of important that things are sealed up, so just understand that. Okay, here we're going to place a low wall. This is, of course, a peek down into your core from your top bedroom. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and finish this up. So this is a single door, and this will face out. So this is the way that it is. You can peek back onto your roof when the roof is finished. Here's a window and we can add a horizontal frame or horizontal embrasure there. And here in the middle, we're gonna go ahead and add our squares with triangles just like that. And then we'll seal up the top of the shooting floor. And here in the corners, we will place 
our low walls. That way you can use this for peaks. Okay, so you're kind of seeing exactly how the towers are about to tie in. We'll get there in a second, don't you worry. All right, so on these corners here, we're gonna add some roof triangles. And as you could possibly probably imagine, this is where more turrets will go. All right. So now you have some options here. You can leave this as a jump up to roof, but I like to have the security of another garage door. So I will add a garage door here and then a half wall just like this. This makes the jump up here a little more clunky where you have to squat in front of that turret. But honestly, that's good to me because anybody jumping up would have to die to that turret. Okay, in here, we're gonna do a regular double door frame there, window there, and we're gonna go ahead and seal the roof in. And just a reminder, this is essentially your heli garage, your extra bedroom. This is a super multifunctional area, so you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Just to kind of show you what I generally do, I'll place beds just like this. And whenever I need to, I'll just push helis through these doors into the middle at nighttime. And um, if you get this just like this, you can place boxes on the top of these jump ups to put your kits in so you don't have to waste space with putting lockers in here. Just some suggestions. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to add a roof just like this. I know it looks crazy, bear with me. We're gonna place a floor here. We're gonna place a window here and here. Go ahead and upgrade this one to metal. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna place these vertical embrasures and doors facing back to base. This is your tower bedrooms just like that the only thing left to do now is to finish filling out the turret spots and we're going to upgrade the base in multiple locations so i'll go ahead and show you how to do that next All right, here we are back outside of the igloo. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and upgrade everything just so we can have it done. All right, so in these spots here, we're gonna add more turrets and we're gonna do the same thing right here. So you can see that gives you an additional ton of turrets. That's a whole extra 12 turrets in your compound. So the amount of compound turret coverage you get in this base is just ridiculous. It is uh, it is something crazy. Now, we're gonna do some quick upgrades real fast. Um, in these spots here, this is your loot room wall. This is the most volatile point of your base. This needs to be armored no matter what. That's non-negotiable. And if you want to, you can armor these as well. This makes it a bit more tankier during a raid. It is kind of expensive per that cost though, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. On the first floor, we're gonna add double door frames in here, both facing out. And of course, this is another bedroom. So bed there and then locker up against this wall. Okay, and one of the last cool things that you can do here is you can place floor frames just like this and we will grab some grills here we'll place the grills in here and we will do a low wall here which forms a peak back up at your base which you can use to cover for people laddering and what this does is it seals in this compartment entirely so you have a shotgun trap defended essentially mini china wall with two spawns in it and it leads directly into your base into your open core so you can continue to fight to take your base back i think it's just an insane addition to this base in its finished form now i will say that these doors here absolutely need to be armored I would not use anything other than armored in these positions. And outside of that, you would probably want to upgrade your china wall to metal, but I think that is just about good enough. And don't forget, you can add a floor grate here. And one last cool thing that you can do to really throw raiders off is you can use a prison cell gate in these spots here, which makes it a little harder for you to jump up but it also segments the compound entirely. That way, if raiders blow up in a piece of compound, they are stuck right here and that's it. They can't go this way, they can't go this way without spending a bunch of extra rockets. So that is 
the finished igloo. This is my second trio base and I am super happy to have been able to share it with you all. This thing has been in progress for literally months. So I'm happy that it's over, of course, but I'm also happy to see it in its final form. I can't wait to see this thing out on some servers, out in general pop. And um, if you guys like this base, please follow, subscribe, like the video, all that stuff. Just let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if I should keep making trio bases. I really appreciate the support from you guys and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.